All right, so my name is Nigeria. This is Terrell, Hello. and uh, Hi. welcome to Otocon 2021. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here this year in a really crazy year, you yes. know. <laughs> but I'm very excited to talk about uh, so many of your projects and your affiliations and whatnot. Um, but I have, I guess, I, guess I got to start with the big one here. You have voiced so many characters, or a lot where you voice characters in both Fire Emblem. Three Houses is worth for Sonic 5. Yes. <laughs> what is it like to be here at Otakon and to see the craze of this big fandom of this video game here? It's it's amazing. Honestly, this is the first convention I've gotten to do since either of those games came out. Yeah. So it's, it's a little uh, overwhelming and in a good way. Yeah. I just, you know, you record and it comes out and like, you know, You've got people on Twitter that are like, yay, I loved you. And you're like, thank you so much. <laughs> but it's it's not the same as like meeting a person face to face and yeah. being like, I'm so happy that like you liked my work. Because <laughs> you do all of that work in a bubble and you're like, I like it. And the director <laughs> likes it. Yay. I hope other people do, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's been it's been a real honor getting to meet people that liked the work. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Congratulations for thank sure. You. Um, yeah, I guess uh, kind of following up with the persona question, uh, of course, played Royal, beat Royal. Gotta say, I don't, I don't know if you've gotten through that. Or you, you, you read the script, so you knew where it was. Yeah, I, <laughs> like, I, I, you can't um, spoil me on what happens. <laughs> uh, gotta say, I didn't see that, that, that coming at all, especially playing the original. Uh, really tear me up. I yeah. <laughs> caught me out of left oh, field. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess kind of reading that, like, what was your reaction to where Kasumi was going and, and, and Royal? Um, and the twist on that, I guess. Yeah, uh, it's it actually, she means a, a whole lot to me. Uh, not to go into too many spoilers, uh, but uh, the, early on they established that Kasumi has a, a sister who passed away. Right. And uh, it actually, I didn't know that about her when I auditioned for the character and booked the character. Uh, but when I found out in the booth, I, I also had a little sister who passed away when uh, we were both teenagers, and I just, it spoke to me so much, and I, it, for myself, dedicated my entire performance to her the minute I found out about that, and um, so Kasumi's always going to mean a lot to me that mm. way. It's, I, I think, I like to think that people can hear that coming through mm. in I the performance yeah. <laughs> um, when, when I, that, when you know, you get to those scenes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about to get me right down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay. I definitely appreciate you sharing that. That's, uh, yeah. That's... <laughs> I know. I hate to bring the room down. No, but no, also, no, it's, no. it's, it really means a lot to me. So I, I, this wasn't a question I had, but I, I guess I have to ask then as a professional, you know, there's, there's, there's a routine or strategy upon taking roles, but with something so personal to you, how did you cope to get the job done? Oh, oh, I mean, <laughs> that's just part of being an actor is like tapping into those things that are there and then being able to kind of turn it off. Yeah. I mean, the thing about grief is that it's always there. Yeah. It, it never really goes away. It, you learn to just deal with it in your day-to-day -day life. Yeah. I think that's actually a lot of, of Kasumi's story mm -hmm. is learning to handle that grief and how you continue to proceed through life mm -hmm. with that because it never does go away it's she wants it to go away um but that's not how the human experience works yeah. so to tap into it isn't really that hard because it's always there yes that's true i yeah. you know terrell upon preparing for this has said like this was the character he wanted to talk about the most with <laughs> you and i think we both can agree this easily your best performance of anything you. but to know now this story just is is touching yeah, it's it's definitely she's, she she is she is one of my top characters i know actors tend to go oh i can't possibly pick a favorite character they're all my babies and that's true but kasumi is definitely in my top characters if yeah. not my favorite character i've voiced so far Okay. Yeah, I heard you say that uh, you tend to be typecast into playing dancers. Like every, every game. <laughs> People or, were saying <laughs> that when, when she came out because 
she had come out and there was Sylvia in Fire Emblem Heroes and there was Primrose and Octopath right. Traveler and it was like, yeah, there, there have been, and Nozomi in Love Live. I was like, oh, there have been a, a few dancers. I'll take it. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I can't dance. I was going to say, does that translate? <laughs> I can play DDR like no one's business and I can't dance. <laughs> that counts for sure. <laughs> um, so obviously we know your favorite character, and that, that was going to be my question before I, I knew about this backstory. I mean, there are other there are other characters I like a great deal. Okay, um, I, well I love to hear that. I also okay. also would love to hear then then what character did you find to be the most challenging to to take Ooh. upon? Um, Ragyo Kiryuin from Kill a Kill was a very 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 challenging character for me. She's she's vocally in like a very I mean. It feels like it wouldn't be difficult, but she's she's down at the bottom of my range. But she also has that strength and that elegance. Mm -hmm. So there's that vocally, it's in a very like tense place. Mm -hmm. And then she's also like yelling like crazy. And she's got minutes of maniacal laughter mm -hmm. that I don't mm -hmm. know how Romy Park does it because she just <laughs> never breathes, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but uh, that that yeah, that was a really really challenging role for me. Um, but Alex Von David, the director, did a great job with that whole show. Yeah. Uh, and he was really in my corner through that whole recording experience. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, as for other roles that are some of my favorites, Nozomi from Love Live means a lot to me. Um, I felt like when I booked Nozomi, I felt like I was just going to be doing deep voices forever because everybody knows I have this deep voice and I can do it. So I was like, oh, I mean, that's cool. And I love doing those voices. You know, I love being Catherine. I, I love Ragyo and I, I'm, I love Big Barda is one of my favorite characters I've ever voiced ever. Uh, but to finally be given the opportunity to play like someone under the age of 40 was nice. <laughs> And, and to get to use like something a little bit, I mean, Nozomi still isn't close to my natural voice, but to do something on the other end of my register was, yeah. was really fun and I felt super grateful. I was just, when I did Nozomi, I was like, I'm just so happy to be a part of this group. And I was like, this is a lot like Nozomi. She's just really happy to be a part of this group, just like me. Um, you just, in general, you try to find things like that that you can hook into yeah. to latch on to a character. Uh, and that was, that was me for Nozomi. Um, She's, and then I mentioned Big Barda. She's mm -hmm. another character I absolutely loved getting to play. Um, Harley Quinn in Telltale Batman. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I never thought in a million years I'd ever be Harley. Like, of all the Batman characters, it's like, uh, if I had a chance at anything, I'd probably be Poison Ivy. I really want to be Batgirl. <laughs> but Harley never would have thought. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then to be in a Telltale game, because Telltale, I mean, I know that they, they unfortunately had problems, but yeah. especially at the time that I booked it, I'm like, Telltale's one of my favorite game companies. Yeah. So uh, they, I was just like floored yeah. <laughs> to get to be a part of that project. You deserve it. Is it, is it hard to kind of, like if you plan through like one of your works to kind of remove your voice out of your head, like when you, you hear yourself like, oh yeah, that's, that's me, like. Um, I do a lot of uh, like voice matching and sort of, things and I've had people ask me like when you're doing voice matching how do you how do you make it sound not like you right. um, and my answer is it's always gonna sound like you to you you're always gonna be able to recognize your own voice you're yeah. never gonna fool your own ear you've grown up <laughs> listening to that voice just like a well-trained person listening can be like oh yeah, yeah yeah that's Jim Cummings and they'll yeah. be like, who, how, how, how did you get that? And it's like, oh yeah, you can, you can hear it. Yeah. So if you're listening for it, you're always gonna be able to hear yourself. Mm. Um, but it's the acting where the character really shines through and comes out and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, separates from you. Cause Lord knows I'm nothing like Rocky in real life. <laughs> I can, I can definitely tell you've had a lot of time pronouncing these, pronouncing these names. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <getting hard. laughs> so, uh, as of recently, but you know, throughout your career, you picked up some work with Netflix, and yes. I think it's a really interesting time because, um, uh, as, as as an American audience, we're getting dub versions really fast. Yeah. So, what's what's kind of been your relationship with Netflix and your level of trust with th with them in order to continuously picking up roles each and every year? I mean, I. I honestly am just lucky that I've gotten to work with Netflix as many times as I have. Um, you know, you get you get auditions through your talent agency, and Netflix works with a bunch of different studios yeah. around town. So, uh, 
I just consider myself lucky, genuinely. Um, a, uh, I think that they're, they're I, I really appreciate them trying to get more anime yep. out here and, and fast, like you yes, said. Yeah. Um, I, I want to say my first experience working with Netflix on anime, though, was Little Witch, which was really, really early on, I feel like, in, mm -hmm. in Netflix's anime game, mm -hmm. the uh, distributing the two movies, mm -hmm. and Netflix produced the dub for those, mm -hmm. and then also doing the series, which uh, I was an actor on the movies, but then for the series, I got to, to voice direct and, uh, you know, worked with the client, worked with Netflix and the studio and everything to try and bring forth the, the best product possible. Yeah. Which I think we did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was really cool. I feel like they're they're very passionate about bringing bringing as much as they can yes. to the world. Not yes. and that's the other thing is it's it's not just oh to the United States dubbed yeah. into English. It's dubbed into so many different yep. languages, which yep. is awesome. Yeah. Because it's cool getting to hear anime in your own language, Absolutely. even if it's not English or Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm happy to hear that because that's the, as a consumer, is you know, in the, in the day where looking for the dub as much as we preach uh we you know we appreciate the japanese uh, yeah. uh actors you know they're like well we want to you know we yeah. want to hear the english want to see the versatility here exactly. we'll be waiting for like two years or something now it's so know, yeah. i love it so. I, I remember the days of watching a sub and waiting for the dub <laughs> will it ever come out if that yeah. you know <laughs> what i guess what are your your your, your otakon is your first time at otakon yes this is my um, first time at otakon what are your expectations, I guess, from, from this con this weekend? Like, what do you, I know you say you wanted to get kind of like reactions out of everybody, but like out of the, the couple of days that you're here, what do you, what do you expect um, to I'm expecting to meet a lot of cool people and have a good time. <laughs> They're coming I, for you. Yeah, <laughs> like any convention, really. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping to maybe go through the artist alley and mm -hmm. buy some prints or pins. I love pins. I'm a big pin fan. Yeah, right. um, but yeah, I, I like meeting people, um, sharing my fandom. I'm looking forward to that. That's Pretty much awesome. used to that that level of praise at this point. Like, you know, everybody coming after you, you prim rules. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. No, it, I still feel I still feel embarrassed every time. <laughs> uh, but it's okay. So I think for the final question is is we always kind of want to take a peek into the future here. Okay. You've been busy, and obviously, it's, and I, and I think it's such a. Um, it's, it's, like, it's a blessing to be a voice actor, especially in this climate where a lot of how you had to do and produce your work wasn't really affected by the pandemic because most people had already had home studio yes. sets up or yeah. isolation in order to do the work. Yeah. Um, so that means business never stopped for you. Yep. There's like a two week adjustment period. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> so is there any projects you might be able to let us fill us in with that we could keep a horizon that's not going to get anybody yelling at you especially netflix because yeah, you yeah, know yeah. <laughs> um I, there's definitely stuff coming i don't think i can mention any of it although on twitter today i did see um the client for uh fena pirate princess mentioned mm -hmm. that i'm doing some additional voices on that show so You'll be able to check that out on Toonami yeah. in a couple weeks. How does how does Twitter constantly get ahead of these NDAs? <laughs> well, she, she's she's the producer, so okay, she can okay. really she can break as many NDAs as she wants. That's it. Once she's tweeted it, I was like, okay, I'm free to say. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, cool. just just that I do some voices. I can't say my character or anything, but mm -hmm. uh, but I will be on that show when it comes out in a couple weeks. So. I, I gotta say, you, you voice actors keep secrets better than the U.S. Mm -hmm. We need to. Mm -hmm. We do not want to lose our jobs. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like it's such a triggering question to ask, but you know, if there's any little sprinkle of anything, we'll, we'll you know, we'll be happy well, to get a little what jittery. That's I've got. I, well, I'll take Monty that. Monty tweeted it today, so I'll, I'm safe. I'll take that. I'll take that. Well, we hope you have an amazing Otakon. Uh, obviously, a lot of fans are here to see you, and um, you know, hopefully, you'll come back for many more years. Yeah, Please. I'd love to come back again. <laughs> Everyone's been super great. It's uh, been a wonderful convention so far. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us, everybody, and tune into the interview. And uh, we'll see you all later. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Big old bell.